All right, here we are, game one between LGD and Wings Gaming and this nice set of two. And we get right on into this draft. I'm your caster, B Cup, here joined to you today by PQMZ. So we get right on into this draft. LGD, they've banned out the Crystal Maiden as well as the Centaur. Wings, they've banned out the Monkey King and the Magnus. And with these first two picks for both teams, the first pick for LGD, they've picked up the Knicks and Wings Gaming. They've picked up the Shadow Shaman as well as the Lifestealer. Shadow Shaman, a hero we didn't see in the Kiev Qualifiers. Got a bit of a buff. And, uh, nope. Uh, just a touch. And Shadow Shaman now here with Life Stealer. What do you think coming out of this first phase? And I guess you'll get more of a picture after LGD picked their second hero in this first phase. Uh, I really like the Life Stealer in general, uh, especially against Nyx. It's one of the better heroes at not getting disrupted by him in team fights. And then Rasta provides this really strong dual lane that can completely zone in Nyx as two heroes, which is kind of rare these days. You've got a lot of kill potential on him, and Rascal with the new damage buff can actually dent his uh, HP regen, which is pretty impressive. Or at least I presume they can. I'm kind of going on theory here because I haven't seen the hero in like a year, but I'm pretty sure they'll be able to kill him if he doesn't get some help. Yeah, who is this hero? Who is this man named Shadow Shaman? So, uh, Shadow Shaman, he's still in that, you know, what heavy support role? Probably a five, but would he be no, a I four? Think he has to be a four. Yeah, needs I think a little the bit of form. Requires the minimum of like arcane boots and some mobility, whether it's glimmer or uh, link force, to be useful. Yeah, no, Unless you want to play him in a death push strategy where he only needs levels. But mm -hmm. this kind of game where there's a park and a nix, two heroes that uh, get absolutely slaughtered by instant disable, it's a very very strong hero with some farm. Yeah, especially, you know, you catch out either one of these heroes with a hex and into a shackles. It's definitely tough. And Lifestealer, you know, they, they don't have the Centaur. They don't have the Magnus on the board of possibilities. Do you see Wings Gaming going for something like a Bat Rider, per se? Or, you know, something like maybe a Slardar even comes out for their offlane. Two heroes that are, uh, of course, kind of that vehicle for... Um, life steward to really be effective in. I'd probably not pick a bat rider into Nyx. But mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I <laughs> said it. Didn't think about it. Yeah. Regardless of naming the hero, they are going to look for at least one vehicle. I personally look towards something like a Ricky this game. I think he absolutely destroys both those heroes, and he doesn't need any kind of item to serve as a vessel for life stealer. So you peak a lot earlier. But we'll see how they go. Calling picks is next to impossible if you don't know what the teams have been picking recently. So I lean on the side of just not bothering. Mm -hmm. But I think LGD have a lot of um, possibilities to go with their draft. It's kind of similar to how VG drafted though, where they've uh, got these two active cores. Five Does Nyx have to be in that off lane or? Could we even, you know... He could move to a four. Yeah. Sure. But it's, I think you see most success with that when you see, like, Shadow Demon as a setup hero for him. Mm -hmm. Nick Bane could serve as a substitute. But I, I think Nyx as a four is just incredibly awkward. But this game, I could see reason for it with the lane he's going against being so hard. Yeah. So. They're taking a long time for these bands, so I don't think they quite know where they want to go or what they uh, want to get rid of. Uh, yeah, and in DPL, it kind of the slowdown happens a lot after that f first phase of picks. You, actually, really, you see it in like the third or after the third hero pick, they'll slow down for a second and uh, you know really think out their draft a little bit more and go for it but yeah these long in betweens are pretty standard i feel like they're just trying to figure it out there's a lot of things that can happen for both these teams in terms of the draft of course with more than half ready to go so enigma banned out dragonite banned out terrorblade and troll 
for Wings Gaming? Is you know, is there something in these bands that you see might be setting up for something else for either of these teams? And and there's the sword art for Wings that I said was a possibility. And I would have to say, if you think Shadow Shaman's going in the four position, that would have to be an off lane sword art, right? I mean, they they could run that as a support duo quite easily. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty solid duo too. But it is a greedy duo. <sighs> yeah. So. Right now, I think the I think LGD were most worried about was Wings grouping up and picking these heroes that put them under some kind of time constraint. And now they've got this Abaddon, which I'm presuming takes over their offlane role. Uh, he's because he's really, too. really, he's really strong at um, dealing with the Shadow Shaman and Slider as well in the lane slash mm -hmm. mid game. One of the best heroes at uh, backing up like a puck. And ever since NA have uh, founded this offlane Abaddon and how cancerous it is to lane against, <laughs> teams have been picking up on it and really utilizing the hero really nicely. So I really Silence, like the pick this game. That, that's going to be a silencer mid. That's pretty good. Yeah, we've we've seen that before for wings. That silencer mid, and you know, it kind of to me makes me think that maybe Swordar. I don't know. Isn't I think it would be that four shadow shaman in the five life stealer going to be sitting in the safe lane, and then they're just looking for an off laner. But with that last the thing pick, is that they can do whatever really. Yeah, like, they it's still feasible that silence is a support. It's even feasible life stealer goes mid and i like that in the draft the only thing that's uh determined is how the shaman is not a core hero i believe that i could still be wrong on that if they're uh <laughs> smoking something it is wings you know and they are known for really anything can happen in their drafts and they make it's definitely not a good core raster game though like nix and park both uh make your life a living hell yeah, he seems like he could be very much easy pickings for Nix and Puck, and they've got the Abaddon, so they need a safe laner, and there's their second support as uh, Keeper of the Light. I, I really like that. Uh, that with a Nix, you know, you're going to try and stand still if your mana leaked, but then you're standing, you know, still for a Nix to stun you. So I like that kind of duo if those are your two supports for LGD, and now they need their safe laner. And wings again. We we have you know they can mix this up really any which way. Is there any hero you specifically like that they might pick up against the lineup that LGD's shown them at this point? I'd still think something along the lines of like a Ricky could work if they want to run the Spider as an off laner. Mm -hmm. It's life stealer in silence uh, off uh, more than enough damage. I think they just need ways of enabling them. And so far, LGD have two really greedy supports. Even if Abaddon is a support, he's still pretty greedy. He doesn't accomplish anything on the map, nor does Keeper. They're a, a very stationary mobile heroes that want to be getting their levels and, in some cases, their farm. Mm -hmm. And that that leads their draft to be like a bit more awkward, and Wings can exploit that in a lot of ways. But it looks like they actually... Uh, didn't ban a hero due to uh, reserve time, I think. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, and here comes a Night Stalker completely. It's to counter the Cottle. Yeah. And I think it's a really good hero this game. It, it gives them the same kind of thing. It's, it doesn't serve as a vehicle for the Life Stealer, but it does serve as a early game pressure hero to counteract the greed that LGD have. And I'm not too sure how they're going to opt to lane this. There's a few options for it. But I think Wings have a superior draft here. Actually, they have a lot of execution to pull off to leverage any kind of advantage. So you're going with Wings game one, in your opinion, after these drafts of Nyx, Puck, Abaddon, Keeper of the Light, Shadow Fiend up against Shadow Shaman, Lifestealer, Swordar, Silencer, and Night Stalker? Yes. I think it's just <laughs> easier for them to execute. And even if they mess up one or two things, they still have a lot of room to make plays in the game. I feel like LGD is a lot more streamlined in where they want to hit their timings and how they want to play. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll be getting into this game in just a moment. Everybody picking their heroes. Maybe 
I don't know. I feel like it, that's a, that last Shadow Fiend's kind of a weird pick. It definitely is, but um, they have to have something in mind for that because it's a safe and shadow thing, I believe. So let's uh, give it a look around the horn. Ame on the Shadow Fiend, maybe. Oh, no, so it's a safe lane puck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, I've just never seen maybe not go mid. But I also don't watch a lot of Chinese Dota. So Ame on the Shadow Fiend, M99 on the Kato. We saw maybe on the puck. And then over on the Abaddon is going to be Old 11. And then with the Nyx, it will be Yao. And for the other side, for Wings Gaming, you've got Y on the Shadow Shaman. Shadow playing the Life Stealer, Faith Beyond offlane with the Slardar. Mid is going to be Blink with the Silencer. And finally, Ice Ice. And that's not Ice. That's not Ice Ice Ice. It's just Ice Ice. Thank you guys for all picking a similar name. He's going to be on that Night Stalker. So... It looks as though Yao and Old Eleven are going to be in this off lane for LGD down bottom. Um, Shadow Y as well as Night Stalker, but I do think Ice Ice is going to kind of be roaming around the map with uh, Blink over mid on the Silencer, and then off lane will be Faith Beyond. And you know, with these lanes kind of forming up up top and down low, how do you feel about how it seems for both these teams advantageously? I think LGD is going to find a lot of their success if they um, do this dual offlane with the Nyx. Uh, as I mentioned, Life Stealer and Shadow Shaman absolutely wreck Nyx as an offlaner, but he's the support this game. And Abaddon has a lot of um, ways to deal with this lane. And the Nyx can just throw a wrench into a lot of the plans as well. It's that, or he can find the Night Stalker who's opting to jungle from minute one. And he can mess with that. I think both plays are perfectly viable, and they can cause a lot of problems with it. And I also just wanted to quickly mention that I think it was Fog2 who brought it up on Twitter, but people are starting with the double slippers build again from like Dota 1 days due to the PMS change. Yeah. The nostalgia is real. <laughs> when people used to do this, they used to get flamed for it in pubs. Oh, I feel like I was never high enough ranked to really get flamed for that kind of stuff in pubs. Poor guy. Yeah. I don't, really, I don't really get the high MMR matches. I, I don't get high MMR matches because I don't play much anymore, but, you know. I found myself watching a lot more than I play. I don't know. It's, you know. But all that aside, let's get back to the action at hand between LGD and Wings. As we take a look over up top, maybe this position one puck something you, i mean i would have to say you rarely see uh, it's gonna be interesting for lgd as they've got the off lane abaddon with the knicks and then mid they've got the shadow fiend ame and up against blink i feel like given a little bit of time blink's gonna be really strong with this silencer we've seen a couple silencers in dpl that have really just snowballed hard and they they if they get even the slightest bit of an edge uh you know they just take it and they really run with it and silencers just become like a hard hitter throughout the game it's really crazy at least to me yeah it's a really good game for the hero and he basically is destroying this mid lane a because it's uh easy to zone the shadow fiend and b just cancel the self of the curse mm -hmm. So his mid lane is super easy, and LGD don't really have a hero that rotates efficiently. Nyx just picked up a haste rune, so that might have given him some cause, but the hero just doesn't rotate well. He's going to find the courier because they massively miss micro it though. Ooh. I don't know why they're trying to run it towards mid when there's a haste of Nyx. But at least he finds something to do. This is one of the hardest things with uh, this hero is accomplishing something in the early game. Yeah, you're really waiting for him to get that level 6, be that kind of, you know, knowledge gainer for you, and then that initiator with the Vendetta and the stun. So, up top, let's take a look. Maybe he's 16-4 and four up against Faith Beyond, and in recent history, at least in games that I've been involved in, Faith Beyond hasn't exactly had the best time offlane. I know one of those games was a Brewmaster where he really struggled and that game was just you know good riddance to wings it was just a you know faith beyond in that brew just did terribly 
I'd like to see him come, kind of come back to form with this Slardar, but up against maybe on the Puck, it's really hard for him to make anything of this lane, it feels like. Well, it gets even worse when the Puck buys an orb, so... He's not meant to win this lane, though. He's probably getting... As you'd expect against like a dual lane in a one-on-one -on -one lane, so LGD are comfortably winning this lane while the Cardo just continues to pull, and this makes a uh, slightly greedier support hero a lot easier to execute. Down low, they might actually get the kill on old eleven. A big stun from Yao out on two. One more shot would do it, and Ice Ice is actually going to be there with the Void to get the kill. So first blood goes the way of Wings, and more importantly, the way of Ice Ice as we come right into that first night. So let's see what Ice Eyes says this Night Stalker can do with the first night if he makes his way over mid onto the Shadow Fiend, which I think with that little bit more pressure, they could find themselves a kill mid on uh, Ame. Yeah, they just need to wait out this Invis rune, and he's pretty easy pickings if he doesn't have someone backing him up. You know, if the Nyx reads the game and uh, judges for gank, they can actually turn it pretty easily because SF does a lot of damage. And there, they are looking to set up. Ice Ice is just coming around, but the ward's there. They spot him out. And really, you just you can't go for the Shadow Fiend. They have the vision. They know that he's coming. There's no way to really make a play on that, especially with Ame being smart and backing all the way off. So it, it, what else can he do with this first night? Is he going to make his way just to farm, or maybe we see him make, a, make his uh, way down low towards uh, bottom? I think farming's probably the better play. Because, as you said, he doesn't know how long the ward's gonna last for. We see it's expiring now, but... Unless he sees the bottom lane get in a position where he can make a play, it's a bit easier for him to just farm. Because the hero is very impactful early, but... Sometimes you'd rather forego that advantage to secure the faster... Eggs, or have more impact in the second night when the game's a lot more open and your heroes actually have the items to take advantage of your timings. Yeah, it looks right as... now, they don't really have a way of forcing a fight. Yeah, it seems like Wings, they kind of have to, I would say, wait for the Blink Dagger to be out on Faith Beyond or before they can do too much in terms of a team fight. Especially up against Shadow Fiend and Puck, and even then... I don't know if I feel too comfortable with Wings taking something, putting their life stealer in the middle of the fray of, of a team like LGD with what they have right now. Or not items-wise, just with the uh, heroes they have. Depending um, how the fight's taken, it's pretty easy for them to just YOLO in with uh, Global. Because the only hero that can take it off is um, Abaddon with the shield. But, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't have a... I don't believe that um, he's going to get anything super early, like a Yules or a Lotus. Yeah, meanwhile up top, this Puck silenced up. The global silence, even. Ice Ice gets yeah. another kill, 2-0. and oh. I'm not too certain they needed that global silence. The silence was running out just a bit away. But uh, they used the global silence to get themselves a kill on the Puck. You know, you want to make sure. Yeah. And it's a two-minute cooldown. It's pretty short. Right, this is where Wings are starting to establish a bit of dominance. You see how um, the Night Stalker is moving around the map and he's setting up all this deep vision. And Faith... and they can actually make a play top now. Yeah, well. Faith Beyond going in. He's silenced up by the Waning Rift. There's the Dream Quill, but does get the Slytherin Crush off. And that's going to be big trouble for maybe as he is dead a second time in Ice Ice. He wants more in M99. But under this tower, going to take a little bit too much damage. He'll just back off. And this is the second night. They've made another play on maybe. It's 3-0 for Wings. And, you know, you said you like the lineup of Wings better than LGDs. And right now they're showing what they can do in this early game. They've got the second night. They've got a couple kills from their Night Stalker. And that really opens it up for the rest of the team. And it's only going to get worse when Lifestealer starts moving around. Because LGD's counterplay to this is pretty much all based on the Nyx. Unless the Abaddon wants to TP and get involved early, which 
Isn't the easiest thing to do when the fights aren't taking place under towers, or by the time you TP in, the hero's already dead? Because Pug's a very fragile hero. If he actually gets caught, he drops in one or two nukes. Sometimes a three second TP is just way too long. And they've, you know, they've got a lot in the Night Stalker in terms of, you know, silence to really keep the puck in check, in my opinion. They have that just in case. They have the global silence. But now coming in again with the dream coil from the illusory orb as well from maybe. And they'll get themselves a nice kill. The Illuminate followed through from M99. They get one back on Faith Beyond. Now 3-1. to one. That's something they desperately needed. Meanwhile, down low, Old 11. He's going to get chased down by Shadow. So it's a one-for-one one trade. And Ice Ice, he's making his way up top. They've glyphed. Let's see if they go for the turnaround as LGD maybe start to look to leave. Actually, now the TPs are coming in. LGD haven't backed up just yet. There's the silence out on the puck. Ice Ice getting very low, and he'll die to the Shadow Fiend. Here comes the Aether Shock as well as the Global Silence, and they're going to back off Ame as well as get the kill. Faith Beyond, he's chasing, looking for a target, maybe. Not even going to go into that Illusory Orb, so now maybe they know he's there, and yes, they will. They know he's there, they get the Slytherin Crush, and they get enough with that Arcane Curse. And the Slytherin Crush comes out again, Faith Beyond running away with 18 health! He's gonna survive? Yeah! Wow! And just getting out, uh, I may have spoken too soon. No, he's fine. No, he's fine, alright. Uh, I don't like that Caster's Curse coming out, you know, you say someone's alive for sure, and all of a sudden you give out Definites, and he dies. Meanwhile, down low, Yao, he's going to get hit with that open wounds of silence again from Ice Ice. That should be an easy kill for Wings 7-2 as Shadow finds yet another. Yeah, and they're also finding this ladder, diving top. I believe he is uh, going to get punished for this. His... Nope, he's going to But this just goes to show that, despite the fact that Shadow Fiend's farming decently, Wings, they control the map through these engagements. LGD really don't have a play yet, and Yao's just picked up the book, so I think that's enough to get into the six. It definitely will be with the bounty room. And then that's their first way of making some plays this game. And what they do with that could turn the pace, or it could just continue letting wings dominate. Yeah, yeah I'm surprised Yao hasn't used this Tome of Knowledge yet. I don't, I don't know what you're... I guess, what would you possibly be waiting for? He wants to um, get one creep and get the mana boots. Oh, okay. Before he goes ganking. But he uh, is getting outplayed. Yeah, here comes Wings. Four of them already here. There's the Hex as well as the Shackle is dead. Shadow gets another. It's easy for Wings. They're making them, their presence felt all over the map. They're making big rotations. And they now lead 8-2 over LGD. And let's take that first look at the net worth graph. It's only 2,000 for wings, but it seems like they're just doing so much more than LGD. The heroes also do more with less, so the lead might not be massive, but it's only going to get bigger. And the heroes are much stronger in comparison right now. It's going to continue. And there it is. They've got Old Eleven locked up with the Aphotic Shield Pops. That gets purged off. He's silenced by Ice Ice. They're still chasing him down with Shadow here. The slow and comes a big Requiem from Ame, but there's the Global Silence, so they're going to look for more on Wings. Ice Ice moving forward, Shadow hitting away at this Shadow Fiend, and actually a big two-man stun from Yao that might cost the life of Shadow, and it will. He gets a nice raise from Ame. Meanwhile, on the back end, Blink's going to get a kill on maybe. Getting popped is Ame, but with that death comes the Death Requiem, and that'll get a kill on Ice Ice. So 11 of 4 in favor of Wings. They take out three, all three cores of LGD. They lose the Night Stalker. They lose Shadow, the Life Stealer, and that's very much favorable for the side of Wings Gaming. Doing a the worst part about it is Knight's still up for three minutes. So it's not like they get any downtime after that engagement. The second Wings respawn, they can go again, especially as the Slada's 20 gold away from his blink. If he's just gonna make the pace of the game even harder for LGD. Yeah, because wings the, have just been pressuring him. Sorry. The only real thing they can do is anticipate the ganks and hope to God they outplay the situation. They can't even really stall the game 
for push boys because the coddle's only got two levels in blast which is pretty standard and even if he is sitting behind the tower it's not that hard for them to dive it they might be a bit hesitant about global but once that comes up they can easily dive towers they have no real respite Really, OGD have to be careful as coming around the back end is Ice Ice. They get the blink in from Faith Beyond. They get the Infest popped in right away. Maybe he's already dead. There's the Shackles out on Ame. The Yules comes through as well as the Aphotic Shield there. Just get any purge, get a little bit of damage going out on wings, but it's not going to be enough to keep him alive as Shadow gets a double kill on both Maybe and Ame. And it is looking all wings. There's the blink Slither Crush out on Yao, but no follow up from wings. They'll take their two, they'll take their tower. No back off. Yeah, nice clean initiation. Don't drop any kills. Finish off the tower. It's all kind of according to the script. You know, if they had a checkbox or, or sorry, a checklist of what they wanted to be accomplishing, they're pretty much ticking everything off right now. The only small worry might be that the Shadow Team that is comparable on net worth, but you can't shut the hero down in high level games people always find farm for the hero and if you are shutting him down someone else is becoming a muck so the train just keeps rolling for wings i believe now by the time night ticks out they've got darkness ready again so they're pretty much free to fight for the next eight ten minutes as long as they want yeah uh, wings you know they haven't seemed too strong throughout this tournament but uh you know in a game like this they're doing pretty well meanwhile down low shadow the entire side of lgd is here but the dream coil is not going to be broken or stunned with the rage coming out from shadow and here come the rotations and it looked as though lgd really needed to make something happen on shadow a lot quicker there's the hex coming through as well as a two-man slithering crush but wings in a little bit of trouble the shadow shaman is gonna fall y is dead so they take two kills, and the Serpent Wards are dropped on top of that, too. So a bit of a misstep from Wings. They lose two, and OGD, they look to take a nice, easy tower on that's bottom. A uh, that's something that you wouldn't expect OGD to be able to get. And I'm not sure if they were confident enough to make that play because they saw there was no TP on the Night Stalker and Silencer. I'm not sure if they had that information. But if they did, then even more credit to them because that just means that play is free. Anytime they have that information, it just makes it easier. And that will give them a bit more map control and two to three more camps to farm like comfortably, where they don't have to worry about the pressure as much. It's normally you ward up the enemy side of the map and you, you stop them farming their jungle. But a lot of teams just rotate towards yours and if you don't have the towers there to defend it it's very easy for them to just pick off these camps so that last fight put ogd only 2000 net worth down and they're starting to find their way back the beginning of the game seemed all wings but slowly and surely ogd they're starting to pull themselves back into the game they're looking down low for another kill on shadow shaman they look forward with the Nyx, who's giving them that vision with the Vendetta. They're not going to go for it just yet. It's coming around the corner. Is Ice Ice going to be spotted out by Yao? And it looks as though they can make a turn play on this Night Stalker, who's really in a whole bunch of trouble. There's the Dream Coil, as well as the Waning Rift. The nice Illuminate comes through the Silence, and one more shot from maybe will take out Ice Ice. That's a nice sequence of events for them. It worked out really well with that uh, that vision coming out from Nyx. Yao yeah, doing a really good job once he's got that level 6 as this uh, Nyx assassin. Yeah, I almost feel like Wings are playing a bit too passive in this time, but the one thing LGD really has going for them is the Abaddon's at kind of full effect with his spells max. Oh wow, a huge 3-man Slytherin Crush coming through as well as the Global Silence. They're gonna get the kill on, maybe they're looking to chase him on down. And Shadow is actually getting kited out by LGD. They take him out. And LGD, they trade it one for one. And right as I say that, M99 goes out of the game. And Ame pops the Requiem. They're looking for a kill on Ice Ice. They'll get it. And now Faith Beyond will be Yule's up, and they're still looking to chase the side of LGD. They're coming forward with the sprint, the blink, the slithering crush, the kill out on it. Old 11, they're looking for more. They're looking for Yao. 
And right now, the Spike Carapace keeping him alive with the blink up in three. The stun's thrown through. The hex is there. That'll slow him enough. And wow. Just hitting hard is blink. And they'll get that kill. It's a triple kill for Faith Beyond. And just trying to TP out now and getting their way out is Wings. So 17 to 9 for Wings all on the on the back end of a nice three-man slithering crush. And actually Blink, he gets used up. He'll have to use that Shadow Blade. And now the Dream Coil comes through. They have the vision with the Sentry Ward. They'll get the kill on Blink. And OGD will find another on the retreat of Wings. So. Considering how the initiation one that isn't actually too bad for OGD. They managed to kill both cores in the duration of the fight, and the uh, Shadow Fiend stayed alive. Could have gone a lot, lot worse, and most of it, I think, was due to the Coddle being able to force away, and then the Nyx set up, and yeah, I, that made a big difference. It seemed like Shadow was just kind of a no-man's land. The Blink was there, a Slytherin Crush out on three, pops the Infest, and... I mean, from there, Shadow seemed to be out of, out of luck. Yeah, like, the Silence, they can't move like that, so... It's very easy when you go that deep and you have, like, one or two heroes here for them to stop the rest of the wings. And then they can, like, turn around and focus. Oh, miss stun from Yao. Possible chance at getting Ice Ice, who might turn this around. He's under Sentry Ward Vision, but right by him is both Ame, as well as Order 11. A force step forward oh, with the Infest Global Silence coming through. They're going to get a kill on Ame. Ame's going to get four step forward. Meanwhile, on the back end, they've already taken out maybe. Shadow's got that first kill. And backing off will be the rest of LGD, including Ame, who I thought might be the victim in that fight. But it ends up being maybe. Yeah, he used his Yules to try and stop the stun, but then... Uh... Wings just kind of pressed R on Silencer, and uh, he had no play. It's a huge problem for them now. And if they buy back and don't fight this favorably, it could result in, like, the game, honestly. It's oh, like, another fight. huge three-man Slytherin crush coming out from Faith Beyond. He has been on point. The stun comes through from Yao on two. Pops the Dream Coil on Night Stalker, but now chasing in is Wings. They'll take out Old Eleven. It's really not going too well. For LGD, as they've already bought back on maybe the Requiem's gonna be used, but it looks as though Ame's in a little bit of trouble. Ice Ice, he's gonna be hit with that Manalik, he's gonna be stunned up, but here comes the Hex out from Y, and now the open wounds from Shadow. They're trying to chase him down, but the blinding light pops back Shadow, and there's the Yules onto Faith Beyond, and that'll back off Wings completely. And all things considered, kinda goes well for LGD, despite losing the Abaddon. They could have lost a whole bunch more. Yeah, they could have just like lost the game right there. That would have been... It's about as good of an initiation as you could ask for. But the Coddle played that fight so well. Like, the amount of times he created distance on the right heroes at the right time kind of just saves some at least two deaths. And Wings will still be really happy with how that goes, because obviously if they get a kill, they get an Aegis. And now they can leverage that to start cleaning up the tier twos. And they're just looking to continue to be aggressive. They've got the Infest back in Faith Beyond. Of course, he's, to me, and, I, you know, the only one who's really going to be that vehicle for a life steal overall, Shadow. And they're just looking to stay aggressive. They're, they know that they're winning these fights. They know that, really, maybe he's bought back. So if he dies again, that's going to be very crucial. And LGD are going to be in a whole bunch of trouble after that. And he still has no blink because he opted to go for the Midas, which is pretty common from Pucks these days, and then feeling forced to go into the Yules. So he doesn't really have much impact. Oh, there's a four staff blink with a nice Slytherin crush. Get the Infest popped, M99 falls. And there's the immediate buyback, and with the multiple buybacks from LGD, they look to be in a little bit of trouble, but they do get the Dream Coil out. Blinking in is Faith Beyond, but does not get that Slytherin Crush off just yet, as the Yules is used by maybe. They're going to look to run down Wings, as they might have found themselves in a little bit of a bad position. They're going to lose Faith Beyond. They've lost two. They've got their Aegis popped on the Life Stealer. Setting up is Ame with that Requiem, and popped at the right moment to finish off Shadow a second time. And just like that, LGD hold... And they put themselves right back into the game pretty well. I think Wings almost faded themselves uh, when uh, the uh, Night Stalker went too deep. And they're like, oh, but we can turn this. And yet again, slide up links in, gets you all. And then they just kind of in no man's land. And they get punished. And for a buyback on Coddle, sure, his axe is important to a degree. But 
he doesn't really get to control when he gets to use his axe this game, so I'm kind of surprised he's even going for it. Y is going to be in a lot of trouble as he's going to be hit by the stun of Yao that raises the hits of Ame, and Ame now dominating. As he's just been, ever since the early game, he's found himself doing pretty well ever since the first like 10 minutes or so. Right, he's played amazingly in terms of uh, his efficiency. And with how the fights have been going, his team's played really well around him. And silence comes through. There's the vendetta from Yao. Let's see if LGG will look to go in on wings. They're behind their tier two, so in a pretty safe spot. The Infest is out on Faith Beyond, and he's setting up again for a big Slytherin crush. But just like that, LGD, they're just going to retreat. I really like this nice doctor build as well. Normally you see people just go like Phase, Midas, Ags. And he just went for this like super combat orientated build and he's played really aggressively in their face. And Blade Mode's definitely an item that's going to pay off in this kind of game. So while it gives them a bit less overall control of the map, I don't think they need it too much if they don't make the kind of place they did where they go into the base. Even so, they got the tier 3 when they did that push, so they've got options to take out the shrines now, and by the time the next stages comes around, I imagine the map is pretty much towerless for LGD, if all goes well for Wings. Yeah, and Wings, you know, they had that little bit of a misstep over bottom. They're still up about 4,000 net worth, not the hugest of splits between these two teams. Something that LGD can... Uh you know, hope to regain, maybe get themselves their first lead of the game if they do hold on these high ground pushes from wings after, like you said, they end up going for the ages and pushing out these creep waves. Well, that's definitely their plan, but... OGD can throw a wrench into it. Oh, there's Not a blink, like Slytherin kind of Crush, but... as well as the Infest Pop. They're gonna get a kill on M99. That'll get them the tier two, taking out these towers. They did drop Serpent Wards on a tower with 15% health. I mean, it confirms the tower, but maybe a bit of a waste. Not a huge deal, as they now go for the shrine over towards top of well, Yeah. Well, it's not too bad. But they, they can pretty much ignore this side of the map, though. Actually, down low, they're going to look for old 11 in this bottom lane, bottom jungle. There's the blink on through with the corrosive haze, but... Photic Shield is there. He's silenced up. Slytherin Crush comes through. Blink gets the kill, and Old Eleven will fall. So, back to back. Nice mobility, nice moves all over the map to get themselves two easy kills, as well as a tower up top, and now two shrines. So clean. Very clean from the TI defending champions. Yep. It's not really much to say other than they made that as efficient as they could. And unfortunately for OGD, they're kind of at Wings Mercy in the next 10 minutes. The few things that are going for them though are Puck's finally finished his blink and he's working towards the Lincolns now, so his game is getting a lot easier. He's still going to struggle due to the sheer amount of like silences, and if he ever does get caught out, he's pretty much dead. So he's got to play with a really good read on the map. And the Shadow Fiend is still popping. And there it is. Like there. Missed the stun from Yao. They get the Dream Coil, but there's the Shadow Blade. The Sentry Ward is there. But they don't even look to continue there to commit are. on that kill. I, mean, I can't blame them. They're next to a tier 2 with a shrine still up. And yeah. Wings have shown that they wanted to fight this entire game. So. And they're actually going to look to fight this Nyx. There's the blink in from Faith Beyond with the Slytherin Crush and the Infest again from Shadow. They get a kill on Yao on the retreat. And that has been Wings bread and butter this whole game one. As they just continue to get the blinks. The Slytherin Crushes from Faith Beyond. Pretty much on point the entire game. That with the nice infest pops from Shadow. His farm is up there with uh, Armalite, Desolator, and soon to be a nice AC. So Wings, they're, they're doing everything in their power to look to win this game one. And he almost has a BKB on the slider as well, so... He's pretty much going to guarantee himself two, if not three, initiations. Which just makes their life even harder. 
and there's also a gem on the Night Stalker, so map control is already a really hard thing for them to have any say in, and it just becomes less relevant. So, what's like this against Night Stalker are the saddest thing in the world. You place this hill ward, and then you're like, yeah, okay, it gives us some kind of vision, pops darkness, and then it gives you jack shit. <laughs> Yeah, they, Having played against this, it's absolutely infuriating. But the thing is, if you place a ward on the ground, it doesn't do anything for you. It just gets Here's this Blink, Global Silence, Blink, Swithering Crush. They'll get the kill on old 11. Another one, they're in, they're out, and maybe not completely out, as there's the Dream Coil pop with the Sun Waning. Rift comes through, Ame finishes him off. And end up actually trading one for one. It looked as though Wings, they were going to get in, get a kill, get out. But uh, unfortunately... They get the blink in from maybe with the Dream Coil, Waning Rift, and they end up losing Faith Beyond. So with no Faith Beyond, they're going to say, let's just infest Ice Ice and look for a kill, and they're right on Ame. There it is. There's the silence with the infest pop. He's hexed up. He's hit with those shackles, and he's hit with the strong hands of Shadow, and they get yet another kill, this one going for Ice Ice. That's not much RNG in Dota, but runes can make or break and that's a kill they definitely wouldn't be getting without the industry. Maybe with a haste in, I guess, but he'd have a bit more time to react to that. Yeah, we saw the uh, double damage runes for the Puck in the previous series be constantly there. So it is a bit of RNG in terms of runes. I don't think it would have mattered in any sense as to who was going to win an engagement or win the game consequently, but it is something to uh, long for as a the player when you just get the right rune at the right time and they might even get our axe here because shadow queen's dead for 30 we can see he has no buyback they probably know this as well if they stole the completed butterfly especially I mean, you that full buyback. not at 30 minutes in the game blink waning rift they get the stun out from yow they're looking to get this kill on shadow he's gonna be hit with that silence and trying to run away there's the rage from shadow they get themselves the melee racks they look to get out there's the infest on ice ice but he's gonna be hit up by the dream coil old 11 goes in the mana leaks out on ice ice i don't know why he continues to run from side to side but now he's looking to get a kill on yao he's silenced he's dusted up he is dead and now there's the four staff faith beyond with the slithering crush the mist coil keeps maybe alive for just a little bit longer but they've lost themselves the, the bottom melee racks Lost themselves a couple of heroes on LGD. Yeah, and now they're all potting, getting Roche. The Slado isn't quite there yet, so it's gonna live like five, ten seconds longer. But this is something LGD have been a real means of contesting right now. So if maybe you can steal it, oh be boy, because wow. they knew that. That's a the ward, but B I think it's also like giving sense. Um, if they didn't have that ward there, he'd be a bit safer. But they'd probably still make some kind of similar fight. Yeah, they, have, they had the vision, they had the easy kill. Blink, so they're in crush. Blink hits hard. A little bit. Yeah, just, just the touch. And he hits yeah, hard enough. To shrine up. And he hits hard enough to make maybe regret that decision of going near that Roche pit even the slightest. Axe on Night Stalker as well now, so. It's all but a. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Basically just a routine for them now, rounding out this game. Yeah, they've, uh, they've found themselves quite the lead. They're up 15,000 net worth. Yeah, Meanwhile, Old Eleven's dead. I was looking up top. I'm an idiot. And Shadow, he's going to get another with the Global Silence out on M99. They get a second kill. Three dead on LGD and backing off his Ame. And yeah, they end up getting the stun on this Lifestealer Shadow. But he's got the Aegis. He can be aggressive. There's no reason for him not to, and there's the Infest into Faith Beyond. He's been on point with those Southern Crushes. I'll repeat myself as many times as I need to, because you really need to reiterate the point of Faith Beyond just being perfect thus far on the Slardar. He tries to get in. The immediate Yules and the Infest is popped from Shadow. Those have been really quick. Yeah, it's not a lack of play that's uh, made LTD lose this game. It's mostly through the draft, I think. Yeah, and there's the four staff forward with the Slytherin Crush. They get the kill on maybe. Now respawning with the Aegis is Shadow. They'll get another kill on Ame. He's dead for 77 seconds. GG should be called just about there. And there it is from Yao. Game one goes the way of Wings. 32 to 15. 33 minutes in. And a very nice game played by Wings. 33 to 15.
Thank you, Faith Beyond. It might have looked like a very similar series to a game to the first series where it's a bit of a storm, but I think most of this was down to LGD just having an inferior draft, and maybe they were put into this position because of lack of reserve time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they seem to use a lot of it up early in that draft, and then it ended up costing them. They didn't get that ban. They picked up a Shadow Fiend. They had a Puck Top. It really just seemed kind of out of sorts for LGD. They looked like it was working for a moment, but then Wings, they kind of regrouped, and it was all them from about you know 15 minutes into this game. So maybe LGD can pick up the pieces, get to Game 2, and split the series even at 1. And we'll have to find out coming up next. I'm your caster, Bcop at Bcop92. I'm joined by PQMZ at PQMZ Dota underscore on Twitter. We'll be back with game two in just a moment. Stay right there. Listen to some nice chill out music. Wish I could play my own, but it's copyrighted, so I can't. So we'll be back in just a moment. Stay right there. <laughs> 